nanoparticles now that you may not have realized are, that are harming your health. And, you know, once, and so that's a message that should get out to the public. And once that gets out, then, you know, and, and if we hit the right income point, we'll start to do something about it. And that tends to be how things happen over time, is that there's some degradation and then we fix it, some degradation and then we fix it, and it tends to go like that over time. And so, and, and so I think that that combined with new technologies such as like nano for new solar and, and different ways of creating energy and managing waste and uh, using synthetic biology, I, I think there's a lot of possibilities to help us make the Earth cleaner and, uh, and, and better. And, and if we're living longer, then we have more uh, incentive to be greener because we're not just keeping the earth clean and green for our kids. We're doing it for us. We're going to be here. So we, I'm afraid we've only got time for one more question. Ellie. Um, you've mentioned uh, changing the general public's opinion. I'm right here. Ah. Uh, I, I work with policymakers. What are your experiences? Do you have any? Because it's, it's very, uh, the approach is quite different. I think the biggest problem right now, and Aubrey can tell me if he agrees or not, is that aging isn't considered to be a disease. And most of the things that we spend our funding on are, you know, it's cancer and diabetes and Alzheimer's because those are the things that we see that are obvious to us. Um, but I don't think most policymakers realize that if we were just, to, if we were able to affect aging and just slow everything down, then we'd avoid a lot of the other problems. And I, I think that would, if I could convince policymakers of one, that would be like the big thing that I would push yeah, I totally do agree with that. And I think that the curious thing is that they don't realise. Because the fact they don't is <coughs> because the fact is gerontologists have been telling people that since forever, you know, decades and decades and decades. And it just doesn't seem to get through. I think some gerontologists may have been guilty of overemphasizing the distinction between aging itself and age related diseases. I think if we adopt language that emphasizes that link better, that talks about um, intervention in aging as preventative geriatrics, for example, then we might have a better chance to really get the message across. But ultimately, I think politicians, after all, we all know that their number one goal in life is to get re-elected, so they're not really in a position to even admit that they understand when they do understand, unless and until we can get the general public to understand. Which, right. again, is why it's so important to have books like this out there making a difference. So thank you again, Tanya. Thanks, Aubrey. All right, it's time for the next talk. Didier, where are you? Good. <laughs>